Hey everybody, happy Thursday. I hope you are doing well. For those of you that are new, my name is Susan. I am a freelance fiction editor specializing in science fiction, fantasy, and romance. One of the common things I see on author forums, on writing groups, on Facebook groups, everything like that, are authors pushing themselves and others to write every day. When you're talking about writing goals and word count and daily word count, everything like that, the most common advice I see is, well, what is your daily word count? What are you writing every day? Now you of course need to do what works best for you. If you have figured out a writing schedule where you write so many words every day and you've stuck to it and you feel productive and refreshed and great about it, phenomenal. Don't change it, you're doing great. But the majority of authors out there really struggle with writing every day and it causes a lot of issues when you think about how many people push you to write every day if that's something that you can't or feel like you can't do. So I thought it'd be helpful to talk about some reasons why I would actually recommend you don't write every day. Why you should set a schedule, certainly, and stick to it, but it should not include writing every day. First and foremost, you want to take a day, plan a day, or several days to give your brain a rest. You don't want to burn yourself out. There are so many authors I know out there that might be hitting their writing goal every day, but they're starting to just feel low about it. Maybe the quality isn't there. Maybe Maybe they're losing the joy of why they were writing in the first place. Anything like that that can really sneak up on you when you start to take weeks and months at a time where you're writing every day and you're always forcing that output and never taking time to let your brain relax, let your creativity relax and really take a day to yourself. I had an author come to me. She was really struggling. She was under deadline. She was afraid she wasn't going to make the words and they were getting shorter and shorter every day that she pushed herself to write. She just couldn't make her words work anymore. And the biggest thing that I recommended after talking to her about it, I was like, when was the last time you took a day off? And she couldn't, she couldn't tell me, which I get. If you're under deadline, you don't want to take a day off. You want to make sure you're doing everything you can to meet that deadline, but you have to give your brain a break. She took a day off and sure enough that next week she was more productive than ever. Now, while I can't guarantee that that's necessarily going to happen every time, it is just such a phenomenal thing to let yourself take a break. Give yourself that permission and really let your brain relax and don't push yourself to burn out because you want to make this a writing career. You want it to be sustainable and to make sustainable, you have to have that balance where yes, you are constantly having that output. You have those planned writing goals. Maybe you have a certain word count you want to make, but you're also giving yourself that time to rest as well. The second reason you don't want to write every day is because you need time for creative input. So you're taking days off. You may also want to schedule days where you're taking creativity in, whether that's you read a book, whether you are going to see a movie, you're going to a museum, something like that. It is so commonly thought of for artists to go to museums and take in the artwork or go walk around a city and find inspiration for their next sculpture or something like that. But people don't really think of that when it in terms of, of writing, but it really is a vital component. However that works for you, whatever sparks your creativity, whether it's reading your favorite author or it's going to see your favorite play or something like that that's really going to bring that creativity, that power back into your writing, back into your ideas as you're brainstorming, as you're trying to figure out your story. I know writers are very sometimes afraid of reading while they're writing a book because you want to be very careful not to accidentally pull from someone else's book or, you know, think of an idea that actually came from a book that you read a while ago or something like that that's fine, then maybe read outside your genre. Maybe read a nonfiction book. Maybe read a poem or something like that. Again, creativity in all forms can inspire. It doesn't necessarily need to be directly connected to the publishing world or anything like that. You don't have to read six books a week to make sure you've got that creative input. But you do want to make sure you're taking that time to really, again, rest and then also have that creative input so that you're getting new ideas, new inspiration, and new passion in your writing life. Finally, you are going to need time during your week to do other author things. So if you are truly passionate about making this an author career, not just being a writer, but being an author, whether that's part-time or full-time or whatever shape you want that to make, 
that goes past just writing. That goes past just putting the words on the page. And it is exciting and terrifying and awesome when you need to start paying attention to social media, marketing, publicity, your website, everything like that. And those are things that you need to make time for. So maybe you have a day of rest and maybe you have a day where you go to a movie and then you spend your afternoon reaching out to bloggers, making connections, working on your website, everything like that. So many times when I'm looking at, like I said, those, those Facebook groups with authors or the author forums or anything like that, it's authors talking about how they feel guilty. They're spending so much time on all of these ancillary things. They're not being able to just sit down and write. And in some respects, I can understand that. That's a lot of the argument as far as going into traditional publishing versus self-publishing. Although there is a little bit of that in both, you're not gonna escape it no matter what but it is obviously heavier on the self-publishing side. You've got a lot more to do on your end because there's no publisher taking care of it for you. But there should be absolutely no regret in spending time furthering your author career. It is all a piece of the puzzle that connects together. Your writing is not going to stand alone. You want to have all of these pieces that can support and keep pushing you even further into success. So you want to just keep all of these things in mind as you're setting your writing goals, as you're figuring out how this past month went and how this next month is going to go. Balancing all of this is key to having a really healthy author life and a long author career. So you want to keep that in mind as you're creating your writing goals and as you're just fighting the good fight every day. Hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below. It really helps the channel. And until next week, keep writing.